Characteristics of the Ericaceae, these are dicots. They're often evergreen, generally sort of low-growing shrubs, although not always. Generally worldwide distribution, although not much representation in the tropics. If they are equatorial, they're generally at high elevations. They're generally in acidic or wet areas, in the infertile areas, uh, peat bogs, places like that. Flower petals are often fused into a tube or bowl. The fruit is either a berry or a capsule. And there are some economically important members like blueberries, cranberries, huckleberries, azaleas, rhododendrons, heathers. The, uh, one of the unique characteristics of the Ericaceae is the flower. You can see on the left there some flowers of um, Paris. And uh, there are two little tubular bowl shapes with sort of a flared opening. That's called a ureciolate ur, 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 uh, corolla, which is uh, uh, based on the urn shape, for so ureciolate. The uh, rest of the flower is pretty straightforward, stigma style and ovaries, anthers, uh, so on. On the right is an azalea flower, which uh, does not have that unique uh, bonded um, uh, Corolla, but is nevertheless got enough characteristics that it's um, part of this family. This is the Ericaceae, a uh, member of the Ericales order. There are nine subfamilies. It's quite a big family, over 4,000 species in all. And uh, interestingly, nine of the species are uh, mycotrophic, which means they're parasitic on fungi. Here's our location on the plant evolutionary tree. It's a branch of the asteroid group. Over there on the left, you can see where I've circled it for you. Notable species, uh, Coluna is the heather that's uh, famous for the British Isles and in Europe. Cranberry, blueberry, and huckleberries are all in the Vaccinium genus. Rhododendrons and azaleas are all in the rhododendron genus. Mountain laurel and uh, several similar uh, laurels are Calmia species. And uh, Japanese Andromeda is a landscaping plant, a shrub, uh, Paris japonica. Some horticultural examples, rhododendrons and azaleas are um, uh, extremely widely planted. They don't do too well in Iowa. They don't particularly like roasting hot summers or a lot of wind like we have, uh, which makes sense for the types of plants that like to be in acid, wet soils, which is not what we have. There are eight to 1,100 wild species, which is a lot, and uh, gives you an idea of the um, problems the taxonomists are having there. And then within those uh, species, the horticulturalists of the world have come up with uh, close to 30,000 cultivars. These are native to the eastern Himalayas, the Philippines, Japan, uh, but also the Appalachian Mountains. Uh, if you've ever traveled uh, over in uh, Virginia and West Virginia in the spring, um, the understory is just um, dotted with these beautiful white flowers. Acid soils, well-drained. This is the state flower of West Virginia and Washington State, in addition to uh, cashmere. There is some toxicity in this family. They are, um, produce a grayanotoxin in their pollen and their nectar, and, uh, this is, and the leaves also are extremely toxic to horses, dogs, cats, goats. Uh, animals can die within a couple hours of chewing on these. Generally, they don't taste too good, so unless there isn't anything else to eat, uh, the animals aren't going to be eating them. And um, interestingly, um, Sherlock Holmes, in the recent movie, um, he had a fake death um, that uh, was part of his uh, plotting, and uh, that was presumably from a potion of a rhododendron ponticum. Another horticultural uh, important member of the Ericaceae <coughs> is heather. This, uh, this one is Coluna vulgaris. There are also some plants called heather in the uh, Erica uh, genus. Uh, but this is uh, the genus that forms the mats and, um, uh, on the moors that is so famous in Scotland and uh, in England and other places. Uh, it's very widely found in uh, Europe and Asia. Um, it was disliked in the 1800s because uh, the landscape of the poverty was uh, this was what was there. The soils were infertile, and uh, it represented um, a negative thing. Today, it's an exceedingly popular landscaping plant. You have to have areas that are lime-free. You need that acidic soil uh, and uh, generally some um, pretty dependable moisture. Uh, but there are many cultivars now available of this genus, of this species. 
It's a food source for grouse and sheep and deer in Scotland. And the honey has a very unique f flavor, but it's prized amongst those who develop a taste for it. And uh, in, in England, and especially in Scotland, uh, white heather is considered lucky. So it's often in bridal wreaths and used in the names of pubs and other romantic things like that. Uh, another an example of an edible Ericaceae is um, uh, the uh, cranberry, which has a common name of crane came from craneberry, and you can see the uh, flower in the upper right. Upper right, uh, early settlers uh, thought it looks like a, a crane's bill, so craneberry became cranberry. There are three or four species of uh, of vaccinium that are considered cranberries. The one that's generally grown commercially in the U.S. is Vaccinium macrocarpon, macro being large and carpon being uh, carpole or, or uh, fruit. So uh, it obviously was selected because it had uh, large berries on it. The fruit is a berry. Um, it grows in uh, acidic bogs in cooler regions. And um, so uh, northeast uh, United States, there is uh, a lot of it grows naturally. The Native Americans uh, used it um, frequently for a variety of things, both edible and uh, herbal. It was first cultivated by settlers in the early 1800s and uh, now is uh, a large industry. Uh, uniquely, it's, well, I don't know if it's unique, but novelly, um, the harvest is generally done by flooding the bog and uh, letting the fruits float up. And so you can see the guys in that picture there are um, sort of herding in the the cranberries. Apparently this damages uh, the shrubs quite a bit, but it uh, saves so much time versus uh, some kind of manual picking that uh, economically this is the preferred method. When this is done, there's a lot of bruising, and so all of those berries are going to be frozen right away or crushed into juice. The uh, fresh berries that you buy are probably hand harvested. The juice uh, it contains a lot of sugar because these are very tart uh, fruits, so that need a lot of sugar to overcome the, uh, the tartness, um, which can be a negative to people not looking for a lot of sugar. There are all sorts of health claims associated with cranberries, and because they produce this wide range of, uh, of flavonoids and tannins and proanthocyanidins and that are considered antioxidants, but uh, most of the health claims that have been looked at um, uh, carefully are, have not been substantiated. And uh, one that's been, ta been taunted around four years and is sometimes uh, claimed to be genuine is that uh, they have an antibacterial activity that causes bacteria to have trouble um, anchoring themselves in a urinary tract and therefore that it helps reduce infection. But again, that's another uh, claim that there is some debate about. In the lower picture there, you can see uh, the fr ripe fruits on the bush. Another vaccinium species is blueberries. There's about 20 species of vaccinium that are considered blueberries. Uh, they range in size um, quite a bit. Some are quite small and some are uh, large shrubs. They're evergreen. And like the other members of this family, they like acidic soil. Um, the commercial varieties that are native North American are um, low bush and high bush are their uh, sort of common uh, descriptive names. The, um, uh, high bush is Vaccinium corumbosum, and those are grown a lot in Michigan, Canada, areas like that, and uh, Michigan particularly has a, a quite a big industry for them. And in uh, Maine, there is a lot of the low bush production, and uh, Maine is so fond of this uh, plant that um, uh, it's um, a, a cultural thing in Maine, let alone um, agricultural. And uh, they have 50,000 beehives. I mentioned 50,000. Uh, I mentioned beehives being moved in to California and Texas for pollinating almond crops. And uh, these, they're moved here to uh, pollinate the blueberry crops. The fruit is a berry. There's many, many cultivars, and uh, they do produce a lot of anthocyanins, which are the pigments in plants that make blue colors and purples. Now here's a tourist example of the Ericaceae, the huckleberry. If you've ever been to northwest Montana, Glacier National Park area, there is um, just this raging industry based on selling huckleberry everything. They have huckleberry chapstick and huckleberry fudge and huckleberry syrup. And you can see in the little sampler there, there's even huckleberry licorice. Um, it is generally the uh, globe huckleberry, Vaccinium globulare, 
But there's also another similar one, uh, Vaccinium membranaceum, big huckleberry. These are pretty picky plants, um, difficult to, uh, to transplant even, and uh, let alone actually cultivate. But as of 2010, there were some people claiming that they had uh, managed to get some cultivars that um, if you have the right uh, environment, you could uh, produce on a commercial basis. Uh, one of the big tricks with uh, harvesting berries is uh, these are the, this is one of the main fruits that uh, bears in this area are consuming when they're ripe uh, in order to fatten up for the winter. One bear can eat thousands and thousands and thousands of huckleberries in a day. So uh, in addition to having to climb around on slippery slopes, um, steep slopes, to uh, pick your huckleberries, you need to keep your eyes out for grizzlies and black bears. might be easier to just buy a sampler from the huckleberry hutch. Okay, uh, Indian pipe. We've already seen this a couple times, uh, talking about uh, parasitic plants and uh, talking about plants with uh, no chlorophyll. And uh, so here it is again. It turns out it's actually a member of the Ericaceae. And it obtains its um, food via fungi that are attached to tree roots. So the fungi is taking uh, carbohydrate and uh, nutrition from the tree roots. And then um, it's getting passed on to uh, these uh, uh, myco, mycophytic plants. And um, another one that does the same thing is called um, it's Allotropa virgata, sugar stick or barber's pole. And you can see the stripes on it, so you can see why it would be called barber's pole. Um, it's just a rhizome under the ground until it fruits. And uh, then it sticks up these funny little fruiting bodies. And again, uh, this one also uh, steals carbohydrates from um, conifers in particular. And this one is very particular. There's only one kind of mushroom will it associate with. Iowa natives, not too many, and most of them are way in northeast Iowa where um, the conditions are more like Wisconsin or maybe Maine or Washington State. So it's uh, acidic soils and more moisture. Um, so we do have a couple species of blueberries that grow up there. And then uh, bearberry, Arctostaphylus uva ursi, which is pictured here. Um, the blueberry, the, and also then uh, the Indian pipe, which I've showed you uh, just two slides back, uh, is native. Uh, it's rare in Iowa, but it's um, widely scattered throughout the state. Toxicity. Uh, rhododendrons and azaleas are very toxic to horses, cats, dogs, goats. Um, but again, they don't taste very good, so the chances of them actually being eaten are quite low. The toxicity is a grayanotoxin, which is a phenylpropanoid glucoside. Um, again, one of those compounds that when it's ingested, then it's broken down to uh, smaller compounds, which are uh, toxic. And even the honey uh, from these plants is toxic. Uh, somebody, Pliny the Elder, recorded that uh, some retreating army left a bunch of honey out for the invading army to take and eat, and they were successful at uh, conquering the invaders. If that was true, no one knows, but uh, certainly the honey uh, does have some poison in it. Kalmia is uh, known as mountain laurel and a variety of other types of laurels, but also has nicknames like lamb kill and sheep poison, so you can imagine uh, how it got that name. Again, it's a gray anotoxin and another one, arbutin. Uh, toxic to horses, goats, cattle, deer, monkeys, humans, and all part of the plant, including honey, uh, is toxic. The method of toxicity uh, is often uh, hallucinogenic in the beginning uh, and also um, a violent uh, reaction of the intestinal system, so um, acute diarrhea and uh, death. Links for more information, of course, there's a wiki. Uh, there's a couple different um, uh, botany sites, one in Hawaii and another one, I'm not sure where it's located, uh, have extensive information on all these plant families. And if you want to know about the Huckleberry Festival or the Huckleberry Patch in uh, the Glacier Park area, northwest Montana, there's a couple links there for you. That concludes the Ericaceae.